Hello, everybody. Go ahead. So offshore wind, not a hot topic here in Boulder. We really can't get farther away from offshore wind. A thousand miles from an ocean, a mile up. But it is a real big national conversation. Uh, the, there are 25 projects in development along the east and west coast and the Gulf of Mexico. These projects take about 10 years to build, and there are two currently in construction right now. These two are south of Cape Cod, where I grew up. And it's hard to see an offshore wind farm in construction. They're 20 miles out to sea, uh, out of plain view, but things are happening. Uh, I have colleagues here in New Bedford, Massachusetts. This is a photo from about a month ago showing towers and blades bound for the Vineyard Wind Project. These two projects in the United States are a very small percentage of what is being built around the world currently, right now. Um, you see Northern Europe and China well outstrip the United States. But there are big plans for us here in the United States. President Biden has set a target of 30 gigawatts installed by 2030. 30 gigawatts would be all the projects on the East Coast in the water in the next seven years. Now, I spend my days in the last 10 years working for the developers who build these projects and answering questions from investors and uh, governments and school kids, so I figured I'd uh, answer some of the more common questions I typically get. Uh, first one being, are we gonna hit that target? No chance in hell <laughs> we're gonna hit that target. Uh, typical politician, right? Um, we're gonna probably hit 10 gigawatts if we're lucky uh, by 2030, which is still a lot. The reason we're not gonna hit it is scale. Everyone in this room is used to seeing an onshore wind turbine, right? That's on the left. An offshore wind turbine is more than double everything. One blade is longer than a football field. This is a monopile. This is the turbine's foundation. It gets driven into the seabed, sticks above the waterline, and the turbine is fastened to the top. This rolled out of the factory about six months ago. There's, one, there's a dozen ships in the world that can handle this size component. The reason, uh, the, 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 the size of these massive things, the scarcity of the vessels that can handle them is the reason why offshore wind is expensive. Every one of those East Coast projects will cost between four and six billion dollars. Translating that to levelized cost of energy, that's between 80 and 90 dollars a megawatt hour. So that's double onshore wind and onshore solar. Uh, so the reason why we're not gonna hit the 30 gigawatts by 2030 is really scale and price. Um, now, uh, you all probably have a question in, in your mind, and it's the same question that I usually get in the schools when I give these talks, and that is, what about sharks? <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm, I'm never sure if the kids are concerned about the sharks' well-being or, or people being eaten by sharks, but let me you know, put to rest the fact that unless we're talking about the Meg, Shark attacks are not an issue for offshore wind. <laughs> but if you are concerned about the shark's well-being, uh, there is an issue that is a lot more serious, and that's the rising air and ocean temperatures around the globe. If we want to save the sharks, we have to stem this trajectory, right? And that means renewable projects replacing aging coal and gas plants, which brings us back to offshore wind. And the last question, so, so what's gonna happen? Uh, the truth is offshore wind is a viable solution despite its high costs. It just uh, needs special places. Those special places have existing high electricity prices, they have ports, uh, they have an at-risk shark population, and they rhyme with New York. <laughs> so what we're probably gonna see is a handful of projects built around the New York region in the next six to seven years, uh, but offshore wind is part of the clean energy solution, and if you 
take away one thing from this presentation. I would say we need to keep promoting uh, our renewables and we will then not see offshore wind here in Boulder. <laughs> Thank you.